Thank you very much. I hope you can hear me properly. So, um, I'm Gergely Rakots. I'm very happy to be here and talk in front of you about preparing for future teaching, uh, how to interlink Moodle and virtual reality. And two things here before I start. Future teaching here, the mindset is uh, basically here we want to focus on e-tutors and those who will be professors probably and, and teachers and so please keep in mind that when I'm talking now our main focus was on e-tutors and tutoring people. So, and the second one is virtual reality media. I've tried to find a nice word. Uh, basically what we mean here is 360 videos and 360 live videos. So it's not the virtual reality like in HTC Vive where you can interact with things. Um, so here the main focus is on 360 content. So, um, I have prepared four topics for today. First of all, how to create cost-effective virtual reality media in, uh, for Moodle. So, this will be the first point. Then the second one is how to interlink the Moodle activities and resources with this sort of 360 content. Then, of course, our students, uh, those who have participated in the lecture, what have they um, experienced? Um, and this fourth is some tips and tricks for both technology and didactics that we have uh, come along and, and um, gathered them together here and I want to bring some of them to you. So let's start with uh, the first one, so how to create cost-effective uh, virtual reality for Moodle. And the first thing is our technical approach. We have looked around about the possible solutions and yeah, there are some uh, media creation agencies, etc. but the prices are unbelievable. So if you really want to do a um, um, virtual reality app with lots of interaction, etc. It can cost a really, really, really lot of money. So, and for example, my context is I'm an e-learning specialist at my university, and the main job that I have to do there is Moodle administration and support. And um, we have limited resources for for development of such things. So we were looking for solutions and. It should be low cost, easy to use, at least it would, should provide 4K 360 content and supporting live streaming because this was one of our approach. We wanted to set up a system, click on a stream, for example here at this lecture hall, and then the 360 degree live stream out to, to the students. This was the goal. And our choice was this little device. Um, this, is, this is just a tripod <laughs> because you need the proper it's turned off, right? <laughs> so it's not recording. And this little thing, this Samsung Gear 360, cost about, yeah, I guess about 120 euros, and it supports all of this stuff we were looking for. So it's low cost, easy to use, at least 4K, and it supports also live stream. And we have used this device for both, for recording and live streaming. So probably you will ask, okay, what was the setup that we have used? So our infrastructure is, the central part is of course this little thing here. It has also included audio recorder. So it works surprisingly good. So if you are in the range of, I would say, two to three meters, it's really fine. Audio is, the quality of the audio is, is really nice. If you're a little bit far away and you speak with uh, lesser voice, then of course it's, it's uh, not enough, but basically it's really fine. And it supports, for example, in terms of live streaming, you can use, there are some supported uh, smartphones uh, with an app that you can uh, live stream without any big notebooks, etc. so just with your smartphone. But in terms of performance, you can connect this one with a USB cable with your laptop and then you can have a better performance for live streaming. So this was the central part. We have connected it with USB to our notebook. And then the big question again, how did we do the streaming and the providing of the, the, the videos? So we have used YouTube. We did our research, we had our own media service at the university and we have tried a several um, media players, video players that support this. But to be honest, the broadest um, uh, availability and, and platform support is only available via YouTube. So this is, was our choice, how to uh, provide the live streams and the, the, um, both the live streaming and the video upload of the, the 360 content. And then we have used YouTube embedding into our Moodle um, platform. Um, 
I will talk about it later, how it was really done. And then now the big question comes, okay, we have it in the live stream 360 in our Moodle, how can students uh, access them? And here we have identified four um, possible solutions for our students. And number one, they have a laptop or a computer at home and they can access this 360 content with their, their mouse, opening it in full screen and then just click and move around in the 360 world. Not really immersive, but at least they can um, um, open this. The second one is mobile play playback, so they take their mobile phones and um, the same thing there, they open the live stream in YouTube and just by finger touch they can move around and have a look in the 360 content. Again, it's not really um, immersive, but it's, it, it's fine if you have nothing else. The third one is the most interesting thing, I guess. It's uh, cheap headset, cost about 10, 20, 30 euros, and you can place your mobile phone in it and it separates two different pictures for your left and right eye, and according to your head motion, you can uh, follow the 360 content. Um, of course, the smartphone needs um, a gyroscope, I'm not really with the term, English term, um, but at least it needs some sensors that it can really track your head movement. And, it works really good. And of course, there's the high end, the fourth solution, the desktop with the virtual reality headset. But here you need a big computer, a strong computer. And of course, this HTC Vive, for example, it costs uh, also a little money. And there you have YouTube VR app, etc., where you can also access this content here. So this was the setup. And now the second question is, okay, we have it all up running, um, and how can we uh, interlink now with Moodle uh, calls with, with this media? And before I start, some side notes. So basically, uh, this device also comes with the software that you can, um, your, basically it has two lenses in it for uh, 280 degrees uh, videos, and it has to be merged together for this software is needed, but it is in the bundle if you buy it. So there's no special software needed. Um, again, we've uh, tried to use a 4K resolution. Now probably you might think, well, that's a lot. Uh, and 4K videos are huge. And it's uh, true, but to be honest, the resolution, if you use 360 around yourself, and uh, then it sort of um, 4K resolution is not always enough, um, especially for live streaming, but I will come back to that later. We have used YouTube. The attribute not listed was important for us because um, we do not want it to have our videos so far just to be searchable in, in YouTube. Um, and again, we used embedding. And now to the Moodle interlinks. How did we uh, interlink this content? First of all, the live stream, we were thinking a lot of uh, how to best embed it into our Moodle and we thought, okay, we take the description field and then um, we take the embed code there. So we have, um, it's a little bit small here to be honest and next time I will uh, provide a larger screenshot. But this is a chat module actually and here you have this YouTube embedded and next to it there is the chat uh, channel. Um, and this gave us the nice idea that we could engage with our students into live chat. Simultaneously, we can get live feedback, we can uh, set up the scene and then get in touch with the students and then we say, okay, now it's ready, please go into the 360 uh, environment that you use, whether it's uh, a virtual reality headset or your head-mounted uh, device with the smartphone. And then once they have problems, and some students had problems, we had all the chat where we could figure it out. We were two colleagues, one of them uh, was the mon um, moderator, the other one was the technical advisor here, and we could um, get in touch with the students via this chat. So it's inbuilt Moodle stuff. Uh, the recordings itself, we have uh, placed them into a page, so simple solution here. Um, then we have used after activity completion um, a feedback survey for the students. So immediately after their, their 360 experience, they were able to give us feedback. It was quite useful. Maybe some, some thing, one thing that it's missing here, we have also used a page in preparation for the sessions. So we have described the students how they actually can use it these four different ways. And upon activity completion, they could manually mark if they were ready and understood it. And we had also had a forum for asking questions. 
yeah, and again, this is here. We have the tutor discussions and we have also used the quizzes, of course. Uh, we wanted to check whether the content that we were providing via these 360 uh, live streams or recordings uh, could be really understood. Yeah, so this was the basic setup and now let's go to the students' feedback. What did they experience? So basically the setup was a small lecture. It's called e-tutoring moderation of e-learning. So the context was given. It was nice for us because the goal was to learn about e-learning and how future e-tutors of our university um, where they have learned about moderation, communication possibilities and methods within Moodle. So basically they were taught how to use the forum, how to build quizzes, assignments, etc. And we thought, okay, now uh, it would be interesting to have an extra step where we go towards um, 360 with the goal that we get their intention and maybe widen their view. Yes, we have using this, this uh, simple solution for two years now. We had about 40 students, 40 plus students. Um, this is not mandatory for our e-tutoring, um, uh, e-tutors at our university, so this course can be taken, um, but it's not, it's, it's optional. And yes, we have bring, an own, bring your own device. So we do not have the money to buy everyone a nice and fancy virtual reality headset, including a, a strong laptop. So we rely on what the students really have and they really want to, to use. And the interesting thing for us, uh, how was the distribution of these four playback methods? And half of the students were using simply their notebook and with the mouse they were changing the the, the, the view. Three, uh, six of them used the mobile uh, application without any um, head-mounted options. Ten of the uh, students used this um, head-mounted device with the smartphone put it in. And th uh, the surprising thing was that uh, three students already had an, a virtual reality um, setup at home and could join us via these solutions. It was interesting for us. Yeah, and the feedback is, um, this is a, a Likert scale by being one the best and five the worst, it's around, it's that way around in Austria, it's one being the best. The video quality was rated good, basically um, sort of average. Uh, audio quality was surprisingly good, um, so the students could really understand us. Um, Navigation quality was also very good, so the seamless um, uh, escaping from Moodle into this virtual reality setting and going back it worked really good for the students. We were surprised by that. Um, they could understand us really uh, properly, so the quiz results show that the content we were delivering um, was fine to them. Uh, and they say the, the immersion was average, so basically um, those, of course, who had the virtual reality headset had, had higher uh, immersion. They were more in this 360 world than the others. And we have asked the questions, okay, would you apply virtual this virtual reality solution as a tutor just to get a, a touch if they were completely negative and, uh, or positive against it and it was sort of in the middle? So they were, yeah, um, not really strong against or for it. Yeah, and, and last some tips and tricks from me um, about technology and didactics. So basically, uh, be aware um, there are high, high um, hardware requirements for live streaming. So basically, um, one thing that I have to add here is we could not really stream in 4K. Uh, because it's not supported here. It's, it's live streaming in 2K, at least this is not bad. But uh, the higher uh, hardware requirements are really um, important here. Um, for recording, for simple recordings, it's just really, you take this, click on the button, it records, you stop it, and that's it. Um, and then you process it with this video creator and upload the file to, to YouTube. It's really easy and, and, and fast process and the requirements there are not so high. So average computers can process it. Yes, the high network uh, requirements, basically if you stream in four, uh, 2K, uh, also the students uh, had to be in a place where of course the, the bandwidth was, was, the bandwidth was high enough. But basically it worked out really good, um, but be aware, they were noted that the, in front of these sessions that they should have good internet connection.
Yes, and this is one of the key points. It also has an influence on, on, on the teachers, on the educators. So ourselves, when we were doing this 360 content creation, uh, we'll have learned a lot because this, there needs there, there is a special uh, preparation for this learning content for this sort of um, media that you create here. First of all, the guidance is really important. So uh, if you use the entire room, you never know where they're actually looking because they were remotely somewhere. And if you say, for example, here, this is really important, maybe they look in this direction and then uh, you cannot really ensure that they, they get the content. So if you, for example, want to show something, then you had to stress it two, three times wait, be patient, actually have some um, and tips and tricks here written together. So use visuals, use acoustic case that, for example, you also say here, for example, it's maybe not the best one um, doing this, but it's one way to get their attention. Uh, if you're using, for example, simple recordings, not the live streaming, then you can use subtitles. You can place it in three different areas of the 360 uh, um, um, video. You can use more narration. And the one thing that I have learned, be patient. So for example, if you say, this is important here, you need to wait, you, you need, um, you have to be patient and you have to guide them more in, in a 360 environment like here, for example, in this uh, beautiful hall here. Um, if I say, okay, look, please, here, I can sure that most of you are here in that, that spot right fast. Um, in a 360 environment, this is, you cannot really ensure this. You'd be a little bit more patient and give more, more guidance. Yes, I've already talked about it. It's the low resolution of the 360 content. Um, although it's 4K, of course, uh, if you have, uh, if you look at Google Street View, the, the video images are more sharp and, and higher resolution. But again, they are not using this little thingy here. They have uh, better things. And of course, we had also discussed should we buy um, a device that costs, I don't know, four or five thousand euros that can provide a little bit better content. But we wanted to do it really quick and dirty with a, a low cost solution and what's possible with it. Yes, and one thing that is it's really interesting and to, when, you have to bear in mind all the time when you're doing this live stream with 360, uh, you have a high latency. So basically when you do this, be aware you are 30 seconds, your students are 30 seconds behind you. So if something happens, there is a sort of large delay here. Um, yes, so this is something that has to be covered in the, the lecture timing and management. So some takeaway for us and maybe for you as well. Basically, we loved this little thingy here. It was a good tool in, in the e-tutoring um, course. It can really get the students' attention. It was really funny because even some friends of the students uh, asked us, can they get into the course and have a look at this content as well and uh, may us join in the 360 world. Um, so not just the students who have enrolled in our course, but some friends of them, uh, they speak about it and it's something new and it, it gets their attention. So it's a really nice one. 360 is a good uh, um, way um, for some content, but not for all. So it's not a universal solution. Um, this is something you have to bear in mind. We also have worked out, a, thank you very much, two minutes, okay. Um, some scenarios where our future students can use it. For example, we have architectures as a study. Of course, there you have uh, lots of possibilities here, especially in, in Vienna, where we have your beautiful um, buildings, etc., that you can capture. Uh, also, if, for example, in chemistry, you can take it uh, as a student or a tutor into the lab where nobody or a little, uh, not many people have access and you can do the recording there to get the first glimpse and touch uh, for the students. So there are some really good works that you have prepared for them for their future tutoring uh, life. Yes, and 360 live, live streaming is nice, but there is a high demand on them. <clears throat> so recording does the job often. So if you have, for example, four videos, one at the beginning of the lecture, two in the middle and one at the end, for example, this does the job also pretty well. Yeah, that's it from me. Thank you very much for listening. If you have some questions, please now or later on in uh, lunch break, whatever you have questions, just uh, come to me and I'm happy to answer them. Thank you.
think we've got time for one question. If anyone um, wants to just put their hand in there, and Bob and Helen will come and give you a microphone. No. How long has um, YouTube had that functionality to do the 360 videos? Has it been a, a while? It must have been at least two years, I guess. Yes, yes. It, I think it has. We were brand new, sort of, when they, they launched it. It was first a beta, and we have also tried it with the beta version. And, and you chose YouTube because it's so easy to use and that kind of stuff. But what, what else could you use if, apart from YouTube? For example, there there's the JW player, for example, and you have the videos on your media server, for example. But again, the, the functionality where you have 360 videos, this cost a little bit more, and we didn't really want to get into that. And um, there are, there's one free player, I think, Bitmoving, I'm not really okay. sure. But there, there, but are, there, are, there are options, okay. but they have all their limitations, and uh, YouTube was the one supporting all platforms uh, superbly. Excellent, well thank you very much again. Thank you. That's really good.